feeling good. Good morning, everybody. Back on trail at Massachusetts Route 7, mile 1523.8, heading north after a zero in Great Barrington. Um, feeling completely refreshed, rested, and I'm feeling really good, everybody. Very excited to be, uh, you know, recovering from the situation with my shin splint. Um, definitely not taking my compression socks off this time around. I, I'd stopped wearing those when the really hot heat hit just because it was so hot. I thought I was okay. thought my legs were strong enough. thought I had my trail legs. And that was actually one of a few mistakes that I made that I feel contributed to my shin splint. I might as well go ahead and mention another thing and just kind of get this out of the way. Um, I had also, when I came back home to Pennsylvania and stopped home for a few days, I bought a new pair, a new pair of uh, Ultra Lone Peak 4.5s, and they felt really comfortable. My previous pair was a pair of Lone Peak 3.5s, and I had super feet, I think they were called Trekkers or something like that in there, and they were definitely worn out. Um, I think they were good for manufacturer claims like 200 miles. And I'm not kidding, I probably had 900 miles on those insoles. So I just threw them away. Bought my new Lone Peak 4.5s. Thought they were comfortable, but the Lone Peaks are known for not having any arch support, which I need. So when I was home, I didn't order a new pair of Superfeet. I just went to our local Walmart, tried to find something. And of course, what I wanted, the display was empty. So I just hit the trail anyway. That was a mistake. Learn from my mistakes, everybody. I will share them. So when I had had the situation occur with a shin splint, came off trail with fish kill, and I was able to get to a Walmart and pick up a pair of uh, heavy duty Dr. Shoals uh, with arch support. So I feel that I'm, you know, that's another thing that contributed to my shin splint, along with not wearing my uh, calf compression sleeves. Combine that with problem number three, hiking with people half my age, lost a lot of weight, feeling like a beast, and I was coming off, down off the mountain in uh, uh, Bear Mountain, New York, which I just passed Bear Mountain in, uh, I guess, Connecticut. Come flying down off the mountain, basically just trotting full speed on uh, nothing but stone steps, and that's where I injured myself. So lesson, lessons learned, everybody. Learn from my mistakes. Again, I'll share them. I don't mind putting that out there, you know. This is my first long distance hike, and I've learned from so, so many, and if you can learn from my mistakes, you know, please do so. Um, but everything's great. Iced it down, elevated it. Um, you know, I'm feeling almost 100% in that leg right now. So truly feeling great. So let's put that behind us. Let's keep moving forward. Push north, everybody. Uh, it's kind of funny because the further up the trail I go, uh, the more I freestyle, so I don't know where I'm stopping. <laughs> no idea. Um, keep an eye on water, just resupplied food. So let's see where we end up today. I'm going to try to put uh, hopefully 15 miles on the board. Didn't hit the trail till about 10, 15 this morning. Just going to try to keep moving and just look at the beautiful sights along the way. Push north, everybody. I'm glad you're with me. Let's do this.
view from mile 1527.8. Now out there in the distance you can see I've actually already climbed and hiked through that section. Um, that is a mountain range which actually includes um, Bear Mountain, Race Mountain, Everett, and also uh, Bushnell Mountain um, that I just hiked a couple of days ago. Tom Leonard Shelter, everybody, mile 1530.2. Had the bunk system downstairs. Of course, you can always sleep underneath the bunk areas and here in the center on the floor. And this shelter also features a loft area in the front of the shelter with access from both sides of the shelter. Pulled over there to shelter for a while for a quick lunch and to prop my feet up for about 20 minutes. Wanted to uh, take a moment to reflect back a little bit more on time spent in Great Barrington. Had a chance to get to know um, Puddles Hummingbird, LG, which stands for Leafy Greens, and also Blue Sasquatch. Sasquatch was a name her mama gave her when she was younger. And they added blue to it because apparently she served in the Navy. Thank you for your service, Blue Sa Sasquatch. Um, all of us had an opportunity to meet fresh ground in the area of the Shenandoahs and Blue Ridge Parkway. And we were kind of reflecting back on some good times. We've been thinking about him. And Fresh Ground is out west right now, PCT area, feeding lots and lots of hikers. He's always wanted to do that. And through everyone's support, he's been able to do that and uh, take his Leapfrog Cafe cross country, which is really awesome. Fresh Ground, we're thinking about you, brother. Lots of love for you. Be safe out there. Mount Wilcox Shelter, 
Built in 1939, everybody. An original CCC shelter model 1535.7. All right, you guys, this is the reason why in gut hook, when you're looking for water sources, you read everything, including the comments. What I'm about to show you, I read in the comments, it is not listed as a water source on the AT, but I basically walked about 150 yards from down the road and the comments said, walk uphill, and right back there is a spring house in the woods. And right here is a spring right along the roadway. Fresh water coming right out of the mountainside. Of course, I will still filter this, but I have just a little bit of a, just a few more tenths of a mile down off the AT to get to a campsite. Um, down off the mountain on the AT, I guess I should say. But I'm going to grab my water right here at this source. Okay, everybody made it in the Shaker campsite, mile 1541.5. It's going to give me 17.7 .7 miles for the day, and I will definitely take it. Uh, still feeling pretty good, and I haven't put those kind of miles on the board for a while, so uh, I will definitely take it. Also starting to run into a few Sobos, um, and that's pretty awesome because they uh, started at Katahdin on July the 1st, or close to that, when Baxter State Park opened for the year. So it's nice to talk to some of those folks and get some information as to uh, what I'm going to be facing as I move north. I know things are going to get a little bit tougher for me. So I'm going to get some editing done, get some rest, do it again tomorrow. Thanks for watching Wild on the Trail, everybody. Take care. Good night.